Well, for all the very latest, we're joined by Simon Calder, travel editor of The Independent, who joins us now live from Manchester Airport. Uh, morning to you, Simon. I'm sure quite a fraught and busy day at the airport, particularly for passengers. Thomas Cook customers waking up to news this morning, probably feeling quite worried. Uh, what's the advice to those who are already on holiday? Well, they are in the strongest position, um, certainly if they're from the UK, uh, quite possibly from uh, other countries as well, because they will be really well looked after. Certainly in the UK, there's a new operation called Operation Matterhorn. And the idea is that people will be able to fly back on the day they were expecting to. So the advice for them really is order another drink, sit by the pool and enjoy the rest of your holiday. The people for whom I feel a great deal of sympathy are the uh, 9,000 excellent staff in the UK, another 12,000 across Europe and the one million or so people who bought holidays in advance and are turning up. I was there at five o'clock in the morning at the Thomas Cook check-ins area. People were uh, turning up not aware that um, their flights had been cancelled. A great deal of upset and of course 178 years of uh, history just vanished overnight literally. So what went wrong for Thomas Cook? I think it was simply a matter that they um, didn't keep up with the transformations. Thomas Cook revolutionised travel. They did amazing things. They democratised it. They industrialised travel. They really invented the package holiday. But then in the late stages of the 20th century, and particularly the 21st century, they took their eye off the ball. They didn't quite sort of realise that people had given up largely. A lot of younger people are using high street travel agents. Um, they were slow with uh, adapting to the internet and they simply didn't uh, take much notice of the big low cost airlines such as EasyJet and Ryanair. So who are their main competitors that have hoovered up that business? Well, you've still got the giant of European travel. This is uh, uh, TUI. They are still doing pretty well. There's a company here in the UK called Jet2 Holidays. But mostly, of course, it's gone to the internet. I think if you talk to anybody across Europe, age under 35, the way they book a holiday is find a cheap flight online, maybe find some accommodation somewhere else. They're not getting the packaged holiday protection that you get, but they're getting something which is flexible, affordable and right for them. And uh, Thomas Cook was just from a different era. So does that mean really the end of the package holiday? No, there's still a market for it. It tends to be a slightly older market, but um, there's still plenty of people who want a package holiday. Um, uh, it, it's uh, one of those things where Thomas Cook was just selling lots of um, commoditized stuff. I actually bought, would you believe, just before midnight, a Thomas Cook holiday a week in Greece next month. No, I won't be going, but it only cost me um, about 210 euros for flights, accommodation, uh, transfers, everything else. Nobody is making money at those sorts of prices. So, well, considering that, does it come as a surprise, the scale of this failure? Well, certainly the amount of money that they owed, £1.6 billion, pounds, so uh, getting on for €2 billion, euros, um, that's quite shocking. Um, but um, unfortunately, it's one of those things where um, companies tend to go bust in travel for a lot of money. It's a very cash positive industry until you get to September when the bills are coming in, the money isn't and it all goes wrong.